This romance novel is also a critique of Edwardian era England. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and in this installment of Mojo Notes, we'll be exploring 10 things you should know about E.M. Forster's A Room with a View. Don't you agree that on one's first visit to Florence, one must have a room with a view? We have a view. Number 10. About the author. Born in 1879 in London, England, E.M. Forster used the money he inherited from a relative to become a writer. After going to university, he spent his time writing, traveling, and as a BBC radio broadcaster. While he was alive, he published five novels, including the successful A Passage to India. He also wrote short stories and essays. He died in 1970. What do you think of our view, Mr. Emerson? My father says there's only one perfect view, and that's the view of the sky over our heads. Number nine. Influences and Inspirations Forster made a name for himself as a writer that explored British society in the early 1900s. His third novel, A Room with a View, was no exception, though it was less serious and more hopeful. In addition to its critique of Edwardian-era England, the book is also a romance. The influence of authors such as Samuel Butler can also be said to have inspired Forster since he is quoted in the novel. Number 8. Settings and Era A Room with a View is set during the early 1900s when the United Kingdom was under the reign of King Edward VII. It was a time of much repression. The first part takes place in Italy, which is seen as a more liberated country. The young English girl transfigured by Italy. And why should she not be transfigured? While the second part returns the main characters to their homeland of England. Number 7. Plot the novel is narrated by an all-knowing third person and follows the story of Lucy Honeychurch as she tries to deal with her feelings for a young man she meets while staying at a hotel in Italy. Accompanied by her cousin Charlotte Bartlett, Lucy meets Mr. Emerson and his son George. The Emersons are looked down upon by Charlotte and others because of their unconventional manners. It's ridiculous, these niceties. They go against common sense, every kind of sense. Despite this, Lucy finds herself drawn to George, especially once he helps her after she witnesses a murder. That's perfectly natural. I nearly fainted myself. Upon returning to England, Lucy accepts a proposal from a high-class Londoner named Cecil Weiss. However, her love for George deepens and circumstances bring them together. Number 6. Lucy Honeychurch As a young, proper Englishwoman, Lucy's ability to play the piano symbolizes her status and coming of age. It also shows she has great passions and that she must learn to live in her own way. When she meets George Emerson and witnesses a murder in Italy, she begins to question herself even further. Would you not mention it to anyone? My foolish behavior. Her struggle to meet others' expectations with her own wants is ultimately resolved when she chooses to be with George over Cecil. Number 5. George Emerson George Emerson and his father are staying at the same Italian hotel as Lucy and Charlotte. After losing his mother when he was young, George was raised by a free-thinking father, making him very open-minded. While they start off on the wrong foot, Lucy takes a liking to George's non-traditional personality. How quickly these accidents do happen. And then one returns to the old life. I don't. I mean, something's happened to me. And to you. He initially seems unhappy and unsure of himself, but later becomes more conversational and happy as he falls in love with Lucy. Number 4. Charlotte Bartlett and Cecil Weiss as Lucy's older cousin, Charlotte is a symbol of the upper class. She's very strict when it comes to maintaining the codes of English society and involves herself in Lucy's affairs. He meant to be kind. Oh, please, leave this to me. I know how to deal with these people. Charlotte, you deal rudely. You deal wrongly. Cecil is the complete opposite of George. He's got the manners, the money, and the connections, and represents typical polite Edwardian society. But. He's also pretentious and doesn't see women as equals. It's so disgusting the way an engagement is regarded as public property. All those old women smirking. 
These differences and characteristics are all part of why Lucy breaks off their engagement. Number three, values and themes. He doesn't want you to be real and to think and to live. He doesn't love you. One of the book's main themes is the exploration of class and one's status. Namely, a room with a view represents those people who live their lives freely and without firm observance of society's rules, while a room without is the world of the people in the novel. You can have our rooms and we'll have yours. We can change. Another important theme is identity and how people should try to figure out on their own what's good or bad, despite what society dictates. Forster supported this more modern way of thinking, even though it contrasted with the conservative Victorian traditions of the Edwardian era. Number two, modern popularity. First published in 1908, A Room with a View continues to be popular today because of its universal themes and values. As Forster's most read work, it's also considered one of the 20th century's best books written in English. Number one, adaptations. While A Room with a View has been adapted for the stage and for the radio, it's also been referenced in pop culture and adapted for the screen. Its most notable film version is 1985's Oscar-nominated drama. And the fact that I love Cecil and shall be his wife shortly, I suppose that's a detail of no importance. This tremendous thing has happened between us. And what it means, let me explain, it means that nothing must hinder us ever again. Do you agree with our list? What's your favorite piece of A Room with a View trivia? Everyone's so horrid today, Uncle Arthur. Let's go out to tea. Good idea. For more entertaining top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to watchmojo.com.